Hi guys and welcome back to Macaroon. In this video, I'm going to turn a store-bought discount toy into these cute needle felt characters. The idea began when I found some candy locks dolls on sale for around 4 euros, which is $5. As you can see, this colorful hair is literally needle felt wool, and I've always wondered whether it's possible to craft with these. A big advantage of these dolls is that they're much easier to find than felting wool, which I normally have to order online. I've seen these dolls in supermarkets, toy stores, drugstores, and for some reason they're almost always on sale. You can also get a pet version that's even cheaper, and this one was about 2 euros or 3 dollars. So I'm really curious to see if we can turn this toy into something much nicer for the same price of getting regular craft supplies. First of all, let's see what's inside. You get several hair clips, and the original purpose of the doll is to experiment with different hairstyles. You also get some velcro gems, which can be stuck directly onto the hair, and these also work with finished needle felt pieces as well. I was quite impressed that there's actually a lot more hair than it appears inside the package. As you can see here, these are attached in ropes, and a regular doll has six ropes in two different colors. Here's the candy lock pets to compare with, and these are about half the price of dolls, however they also come with less hair. So for best value, it still makes sense to get the full-size candy locks dolls. And now I'm comparing this with a regular package of felting wool. This 10 gram bag costs 2 euro 50, and it contains roughly the same amount of wool as candy locks hair, but you only have one color. So getting one candy locks doll on sale is actually cheaper than purchasing the two colors separately from a craft shop. I also like the fact that these come in bright candy shades, which are perfect for making standalone pieces. I'm going to use the same characters I made during my very first attempt at needle felting. These were done in 2013 as practice before starting my YouTube channel, so I have a lot of fond memories here. The design was based on this Hamanaka felting kit, which is also perfect for beginners. Let's start by giving this doll a haircut. The quality of this wool is surprisingly good because it's really smooth and doesn't leave wispy fibers. There's a long string inside, which I'm assuming is supposed to make styling the hair easier. But of course, we only need the wool, so I'm just going to remove this. In case you're completely new to needle felting, this is a great tutorial for beginners, and I've linked it down below. So this is a felting needle, which has tiny hooks in the tip. These hooks rip up the wool fibers and cause them to stick together. All I'm doing here is rolling up the wool and then poking it to create a rough ball. The earliest stage of felting is usually the trickiest because you can't really see a defined shape. However, after a while, the wool starts to compress and you'll get a much better idea of what you're doing. The basic method is to create a small ball and then wrap it in more wool to build up size. Doing this in layers just makes it easier to see what's going on than trying to felt an entire handful of loose wool at once. Another thing beginner felters are often surprised about is how long needle felting takes. I've shortened the process on camera, but it takes about 20 minutes to produce a small ball like this. The surface should be nice and smooth, and the needle makes a crunchy noise when you poke it in. To make the ears, I'm using a smaller piece of wool and then poking it into an oval shape. I'm leaving the bottom end unfelted because we need these loose pieces of wool to attach it onto the head. Cut a small hole using scissors and then push the ear inside. Then just poke the bottom part until it's felted into place. For the next part, I had the idea of trying to upcycle eyes from Sylvanian families or calico critters. I thought this might be a genius hack, because felting eyes are really hard to find in normal shops. However, you can get Sylvanian families almost anywhere, and you're not destroying the toy just by taking out the eyes. Unfortunately, this plan failed, because the eyes were stuck inside a lot more firmly than I imagined. I ended up breaking both of these instead of being able to get them out in one piece, and I started to feel quite sorry for the bunny. So I decided to leave it as it is, and just use regular felting eyes instead. Then 
These are three millimeters and four millimeters wide. And as you can see, there's actually quite a difference between the sizes. I've pressed them onto a block of Daiso clay so you can see it more clearly. There are basically two ways to create holes for small felting eyes. One of them is to use a needle to poke a deep hole and then try to make it wide enough for the bottom part of the eye. Be very careful when wiggling it around because I broke a needle once by doing this. The second method is to cut a hole using sharp scissors and this one is suitable for large eyes as well. In both cases, use some craft glue to stick them into place. I'm also going to make the moustache from the bunny design I created in 2013. To do so, I'm just using a tiny bit of dark brown wool that was left over from another felting kit. It's worth mentioning that if you just need a tiny bit of wool for details, then you can improvise with almost anything. You can pull off dark fluff from a hat or sweater, you can take apart some black knitting wool, or you can even use pet hair. And this is how much turquoise wool was left, and I'm pretty pleased that there was enough in the candy lock stall to create this whole entire piece. Making the next piece is easier, because the doll comes with a lot more pink wool. Another thing worth mentioning if you're new to felting is that yes, it is possible to poke yourself with a needle. So one of the first things to watch out for is to keep your fingers out of the way and always work slowly without any distractions. If you're very worried about getting stabbed, then you can also buy felting gloves, which are basically leather sleeves that you wear over your fingers and thumb. This time, I'm going to use the 4mm eye to make a nose and the same brown wool for the mouth. I had quite a bit of wool left over, which is useful for future projects. For the final chicken, I'm only going to cut off the yellow bits from the second candy lock stall. Instead of ears, you just need to set aside enough wool to make two leaf-shaped wings. Another tip when felting a round shape like this is to avoid poking your needle at a 90 degree angle. As you can see here, if I'm poking straight up and down, then it flattens the surface very quickly. If you do this all the time, then the ball is going to get smaller and smaller. This isn't a huge problem if you have enough wool, but for this project, I want to use my materials sparingly. So the best method is to keep your needle at a slight 45 degrees angle, so you're only felting the outermost part of the wool. This gives you a nice smooth surface, but it also prevents the overall shape from compressing too far. This time I only had a tiny piece of leftover wool, so the materials were used up very efficiently. And here are the three needle felt pieces that I made using Candy Lock's hair. If you're interested in needle felting, then I have a ton of tutorials for beginners linked below. It's a great hobby because you need very little equipment to get started. The main thing is patience, and as long as you keep poking, then your pieces will always turn out well. I'm Joanna, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!